Hello, in my last video I was talking about how to make a quest with Beating Quest. Today I'm going to talk about how to expand that simple basic quest. So I'm starting with the same script that I did in the last video, or the same set of scripts. So this one, you are sending the player to go and bring a diamond axe that was stolen. And it would make sense if you talk to an NPC and you bring them the diamond axe, when you come back the next time, they're going to say something different. Presumably their axe wasn't stolen again. So here's how to set that. What we're gonna do is we are going to create an event that tags that the person has done the quest. Okay, and I'm going to call this brought axe. And the type of event, it's a tag event, we'll add tag add brought axe. And I've just, I've copied brought axe, I have it, I can use control C to get it back, because I'm going to use that a couple of times now. So I have created that event when you give the axe and the person says, thank you, have these diamonds, the player will be tagged. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the start here. We're going to put a condition that we'll call this did not do quest. And it's a tag condition. This means that the condition is going to check whether that player has the tag brought axe. And what we want is for it to not have it. So I put the little exclamation mark here by clicking on it. That means it should not have that tag. The, if the player has the tag, they cannot do that part of the conversation. What we need to do now is create the conversation option that will happen if the player has already talked to the woodcutter if they've already done the quest. So we'll call this one done quest and we're going to say hello friend how are you doing? Okay and now we need to have something link to this so that the the beating quest program can identify when it's supposed to be used. And so we're going to click here on this starting options and we're going to put done quest as our starting option. Okay, now the order in which the options are named here matters a lot. Beaten quest is going to check the start. If it can do that one, it will do that one. And then if it can't do that one, it will do the done quest. So the first one, the start, has to have that condition in which it is checking, okay, have you done the quest or not? Now, if we want, we could move the condition. We could have the condition right here on done quest. We could put the condition, um, and I just need to remind, remember what that condition is called. I'll just check, it is did not do quest. So we're gonna put the condition, did not do quest. And we're going to leave it there. Now this time we're not checking it because we want to make sure that this has actually been done. <clears throat> and so now we're going up here and we're changing the starting options. Now done quest is the one that had been that has a condition. So we need to put that one first. So it will check done quest and then it will go to start if it can't give the done quest option. So the order matters. Okay, so now we have this, and of course we could add on a response. We could have the player able to reply. And I'll just put a little placeholder here. I'm doing fine. Okay, now we might want to have a third option here. What if you've talked to the woodcutter and he's told you he needs the axe, but you haven't actually brought him the axe. Maybe he should have a third thing that he can say 
if you first, if you come and talk to him. So we're going to create something there. And this is have quest not done. And I'm just making up these ID names. It could be anything. So here I'm going to say, hello, did you find my ax yet? Okay. So we need to decide when this option should be visible. And it should be visible if you have started the quest, but you haven't finished it. So that condition we've already made, that has to be not there. And now we need another one. We need to create a new condition that says we have started it. And so we're going to do that here. We will say start X quest. And we will go tag add start X quest. Okay, <clears throat> so now we can say that he is only going to do this one. Oh, it's a condition. So we have to add this condition, tag, start axe quest. So this option should only be visible if you have started the quest, but you have not finished the quest. And we need to put that here in these starting options. Have quest not done. And we want to put this one before the start because our start has no conditions to it. So if we have have quest not done underneath the start, it will never be shown. It has to go above the start. Okay, so now the person says, hello, did you find my ax yet? We need this one to point to here is your ax. Here is an ax. We should also have another option here, and I could create the other option using this add button, or I can create it under the pointers thing here. And I'm just making a little bit of conversation here. You can add whatever type of conversation to your characters. Give them a personality. It's, it's fun to give them something of a personality. So now we have a couple of different options here. You want to go through and test your thing before. Test how your conversation flows. Make sure that all of the conditions are triggered at the right time. Now, what if we want it so that the person can do the quest a second time, but they can't do it right away? So what we can do is when they finish the quest, when we say thank you, we could start a another quest here. We can say we're going to start timer. Okay, and this is, it's going to start a timer, which is an objective. So we're going to go start objective, or sorry, objective start timer. And now we need to create an objective that is a timer. So anytime you're going to create an objective, open up the objective list, go through, find the objective you want. We want a timer, which is called a delay. And this is going to be the time measured in minutes and only when the player is online. So what we're going to do right here, I'm going to copy this example. I'm going to paste it in. And then I am going to rename it. And <clears throat> I'm going to decide how long it should be and put it there. Okay, so now when you get give the diamonds, or sorry, when the NPC gives the diamonds to the player, the NPC will also start timing. And when this time 
buffer runs out, it's going to clear the tags. So we need to make this event to clear the tags. So I go to the event list and I look for the event I want. Now I want to clear tags, so I'm going to go tag delete and then the tag name. But I want to clear two tags, so what I'm going to do is a special type of event called a run event. And this lets me do several commands in a row. So I'm going to say clear tags. That's the event name. I'm going to go run. I do the little pointy arrow. I go tag, delete, and now I need to remember my tag names. So I'm going to save that right now while I figure out what my tag names are. Start Axe Quest. I open it up again. Tag, delete, start Axe Quest. And the other one, which was called Brought Axe. Okay, so now I have it set so that when I run this particular event, it should clear both of those tags. Now it's not going to tell the player that those tags are cleared, it's just going to quietly do it. So when the player comes back, they're going to get that original starting message again. Hello, can you bring me my diamond axe? We're right back where we were at the beginning. Now for this particular plot, it might not make sense to have the diamond axe stolen again, even if it's months down the road or days down the road. But there's other plots where you might want to have a timer. So you can do it again, but you can't do it too quick.